So now we come to the next presentation. It's from Atlas Copco. So we have uh, Konrad Latam, who is the vice president business development and based in, in Belgium. He has worked for more than 25 years in sales, service, project management, marketing functions across Atlas Copco. He was general manager in, in India and then moved to Belgium to support the product developments of the energy conversion pillar for the oil-free air division. So they are focusing on solutions to valorize the heat that is coming from air compressors. So Conrad has a position that is very interesting and he has, uh, has a passion to provide solutions that make customers more sustainable. And then we have Manuel van de Vorde. He is the vice president in engineering in the Belgian branch at Atlas Copco. He has worked 22 years on air compressor efficiency, both in research um, as a product developer and uh, since three years he has focusing uh, more on solutions to valorize the heat that is coming from the air compressors. So bringing that low temperature heat up to process heat in the form of steam is one of the pathways. So Manuel has a PhD in mechanical engineering and in his current role, he's responsible for developing standard steam compressors. So I'm very happy to have you both here. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Edward, and also thank you to Christian for the nice presentation before. Um, we start together uh, a little bit in the, the future. That's uh, the picture that we try to show here. We'll come back on a little bit, but it's trying to show uh, where we're going to take um, take the utility room of the future. Um, we'll explain a little bit more on this uh, as we go forward. So uh, starting a little bit with who we are, um, myself uh, and uh, Manu. Um, thank you, Gordon, for the um, uh, introduction. I don't think we need to do any more than, mm -hmm. than, than what we are there. So a little bit about Atlas Copco, those that don't know uh, the company, it's a Swedish engineering company, um, uh, 151 years now, um, roughly 53,000 people across the world, multinational. Uh, turnover last year was just a, just a little bit north of um, 15 billion euros. And we have around more than 40 production facilities uh, across the world. And um, as, uh, as mentioned, um, we have developed a new um, a pillar called the in energy conversion and together myself and uh, Manu are sort of responsible for um, from my side the marketing and from uh, Manu's side the engineering to look for ways in which waste heat inside a, a, a first a, a utility room predominantly from the compressors the air compressors how that waste heat can be turned into different things and today we're going to talk a little bit about the journey that takes place inside uh, a utility room so this is a maybe a traditional or a typical utility room. You have um, maybe a mix of different compressors, air compressors. You have a older twin tower type of uh, desiccant dryers. Um, and if you sort of have a look here, you've got these steam boilers, um, uh, gas fed or whichever way around. So the CO2 emissions are very high. The electricity costs are very high. And of course, your, your carbohydrates, uh, your hydrocarbons are also very high as well. And what we want to do and uh, what is a little bit the vision is to, to move more towards a, a much more energy efficient, but also much more decarbonized utility room. Compressors become more efficient. We start putting an optimizer or some sort of control system to, to optimize the, the running of the machines. We move to heat of compression dryers and, and then energy recovery units. And, and this is where we start to introduce then the heat pump and uh, through a, a system of, of different steam generation to also a steam compressor. And we've been presenting this idea, this concept, this, this vision of the future where the CO2 reduction is, is down to a minimum. And of course, your, your burning of fossil fuels is also disappearing as well. And also your overall electricity cost could, could drop. And this concept of the future has been something that we've been talking to customers about and whether they're interested in this. And that's what a little bit where we want to, to show you where we've got to. So again, how to visualize this, we can take uh, typical air compressors that are in, in an in a installation, hopefully powered by green electricity, uh, solar or, or wind, um, providing compressed air to the, to the uh, factory. That's what it's doing through a 
series of collecting the hot water into an energy recovery unit where we can feed water at say 70, 80, 90 degrees into things like showers or even if need be a pre-boiler. Then the heat pump that we have, we can now start to lift that uh, uh, wasted heat, also collection of waste heat through the chillers and to generate the water then at 120 degrees through a flash tank, we can then use our steam compressor to lift up to a certain temperature, a certain pressure, and then other uh, technologies. So running, for example, the oil-free screw in reverse, we can then make an expansion and actually then power uh, the, the, the grid with this green electricity in a pressure letdown from steam. So these are a little bit the overview of some of the, uh, the, the, the capacities that we're actually looking at at the moment. So what we're trying to do as a, as a company is standardize our solution. Atlas Copco is very good at making um, standard gray boxes, and uh, you'll see a little bit how we want to go forward in the future. So with our heat pumps, we have a certain size, certain capacity that we can do. And then with our steam compressor, we can lift up uh, to a certain size and a certain flow um, and a certain temperature as well. And then we can move even into the very large um, heat pumps. Some of these are used also in district heating, but uh, industrial heat pumps there that can go into the megawatts when we actually customize these specifically. And what we're looking more at today is, is in this side uh, here, uh, our standardized solution. So just a little bit on the industrial heat pump that we have. Um, it's a gray box um, delivering water temperatures up to 120 degrees. Um, we have uh, capacity up to about 3.5 megawatt um, and then COPs between two and six. Um, exactly like uh, Christian was explaining, the lower the lift, the, the higher the COP. Variable speed driven um, and uh, being able to monitor everything across the world. And then a little bit about our steam compressor, which is the main part of our uh, discussion today. It's um, using technology that we already know, already have uh, mastered over the years, putting it inside a gray box in order to be able to, uh, to standardize this over time. Um, it's providing oil-free and uh, air-free dry superheated uh, steam. Um, depending on the lift, of course, COP is between two and, and 10. Um, we're driving this with a variable speed unit. Um, so the motor in here is driven um, by a converter, uh, which actually will, will then change the speed of it. Um, we have a standardization in the, our controls and monitoring of it uh, through something we call our Electronicon, which gives us then this full connectivity. And I'll come back a little bit on that one. Um, some of the heat of compression, we actually generate uh, extra steam with. Um, and we're looking at the moment temperatures around 80 degrees on the inlet to, to lift to around just short of 200 degrees on the on the outlet. Um, this just gives you some images of what it, it looks like. Um, the internals of it is an oil free screw. Um, so it's uh, two uh, twin rotors running together. Um, it's volumetric, meaning that if the flow um, is actually controlled then by the speed of the motor or the speed of the, the rotors working together. And interestingly, then the pressure is independent actually of the of the speed. Then if we have a look, we have good pressure ratios that can take in there. So uh, depending on depending on where we can go, we can even lift up in, in, in pressure uh, to, to a pressure ratio between six and ten uh, in there. Um, the actual liquid is injected at the beginning. Um, which actually helps provide a cooling um, to, to the uh, compression stage, but in the process also converts that uh, excess uh, liquid um, through, through compression to extra vapor. Um, and uh, we'll show some of those results a little bit in a minute there as well. Of course, being a speed controlled solution, uh, it can actually then be optimized. Um, so we actually have a, a turn down in, in this, which is actually very useful then for how much steam is actually required. So it's sort of one design fits all, but extremely fast reaction time moving sort of in seconds from a very um, a small flow up to a, to a higher flow. And it can actually very accurately control itself in between without uh, much of a degradation in, in uh, efficiency. So just a little word on SmartLink, and that's something that we see as quite interesting, is that we have around 300,000 compressors connected globally to this system. So we're kind of monitoring those on a on a day-to-day, hour-to-hour, minute-to-minute basis. Um, we, we're connected to them so to provide uh, analysis 
constantly and continuously. So we know where the compressors are operating and, and what kind of conditions they're working under. Um, we're, we're using AI intelligence to um, make sure, first of all, that we keep the reliability and the uptime of the, um, the compressor, um, but also to start predicting energy savings that can come on this. And the reason I share this or show this is that this is going to be the feed or the source for our actual going forward with our steam compressors, because um, we want to try to get that utility room under under control. We want to decarbonize it um, as much as possible. But knowing where to go first and knowing where to start with these 300,000 compressors is, is quite important. So a lot of the customers that we actually talked to uh, in the beginning said, this all looks very nice. Nice that you try to make use of waste heat from a compressor. Nice that you tried to do it. But can you show us an installation and can you can you uh, demonstrate, uh, demonstrate it to us? So we built it ourselves, um, and this is the actual um, bottom right-hand corner is the is the live sort of link to the laboratory that we actually have here. Um, and I'll, I'll try to explain it in, in a little bit, uh, starting here, first of all, with the air compressor, standard oil-free screw water-cooled air compressor. Um, it generates uh, hot water coming out there around about 60 degrees. We then feed that into our energy recovery. Um, uh, units purely so that we can control the flow of the water. We take it into a low temperature uh, tank. So inside here, uh, it's around 60 degrees before we feed it into our heat pump. And from the heat pump, we then bring it back into the air compressor to make sure that the air compressor is optimized with having a water temperature below 40 degrees Celsius. On the other side of the heat pump, uh, we generate and lift up to around 120 degrees. Uh, this is what you then see with this uh, water tank here. We take it into a flash tank and then through the flash tank, we lift it up with the steam compressor before bringing it back, degassing it and um, and making sure that we have a cycle that we can do do testing on. OK, so this image that you see on the right hand side is a little bit of drone footage that we took. This is our heat pump that uh, you see operating there. You see the cold tank and the hot tank. It's all lagged here. This, this part here is just the energy recovery. This is the feed, the air compressor. Then you see our, the heat, um, the, the flash tank that we've built uh, in here. And at the end, you see this uh, steam compressor. Um, and, and this whole system is now operating. There's the steam compressor here and the, the uh, uh, deaerator or degasser here. So this is now a working operating uh, system that we've be, we've built and tested and we are testing on constantly on a day to day basis, uh, gathering more and more information, gathering more data from it. And um, I'm going to pass over to my colleague, Manu, who's going to take us a little bit through just one of the test uh, results that have come out of there. Yeah, th thanks, uh, Conrad. So this is um, a snapshot of the PLC screen, yeah, which is actually the brain behind the whole uh, system we've built. In the light gray box, where my, my pointer is now, is, is inside of the compressor, the steam compressor. And you will visually recognize things like flash vessel easily. So the steam compressor takes in the steam from this flash vessel as well as injected water. And so we inject water to get the outlet temperature under control and we can allow it to an, um, a tuned superheat. The first results actually came in mid of January of this year. Um, and here you see it's bar gauge, yeah, so take care. It's 2.3 bar gauge. It's reference condition, where you see the compressor is operating at 60% of its nominal speed and is pushing through 0.37 uh, ton per hour. And so we could go slightly above um, half a ton, uh, 0.6 uh, to be precise. This is, um, okay, the, the system is full with measurements. We cannot only measure uh, important factors, but also control. And so this is mentioned uh, kind of mini laboratory for us. Um, I, I, I was hesitating to put a full map of conditions which we measured until now, because we knew uh, when we commissioned the system that we were gonna have some child uh, problems. So we have a reconditioned, a refurbished, Call it second-hand uh, steam compressor in there yeah, because we know we're, we're going to have some um, some damage and some stuff and that's actually what what happened yeah, so but nevertheless this point measured here yeah, 2.3 bar gauge saturation 
136 degrees C, gave us a COP of six. The thermal energy in the exhaust versus the electricity we put in, which is only a mere 45 kilowatts. It's a very tiny uh, operating condition to be true. Our, our test installation will, will go a lot um, further. Yeah, so, but today we can say we have a fully controllable um, automated system. You can set a test condition and it will uh, it will move there. And the next thing yeah, we have the commission this commissioning is finished. And yeah, we will um, soon switch now to a real steam compressor errand and do then the tests uh, for real in the operating window and the performances. The next one you saw it very briefly in the earlier slides. 10 megawatts on the horizontal axis. It comes from this a little bit more sophisticated calculation. It is still a model. Yeah? So it's based on our air compressor knowledge and yeah, steam properties, where we believe this is as accurate as we can calculate the performance for our five air compressor blocks. Yeah? So we have the smallest one, yeah, version two to the biggest one. And this gives a visual impression of what we can do. This is all single stage. Yeah, so, um, yeah, you see the, the megawatts and the, the, the saturation temperature, take care, saturation temperature. The steam compressor has the advantage that we can um, set the superheat. And today we believe 15 degrees C superheat is quite um, interesting for a lot of processes at customer sites. So what we will do next, is um, evidently move now for real, with real compressor, a new uh, compressor air block, where we will uh, start to validate all our calculations on performance in the operating window, as well um, the inlet pressure absolute versus the pressure differential. And these are uh, all parameters relevant to customer situations. We have controls of each of the building blocks, air compressor, heat pump, and steam compressor. We do need one more iteration to have the whole system, let's say, sing and dance optimally together. Uh, what Conrad mentioned before, yeah, customers not coming to us, is we can, from the data of their machines, just estimate how much potential on uh, energy yeah, uh, revitalization, basically, yeah, there is a potential. Food and beverage will definitely be the first, uh, let's say, target segment. We have set up the test installation, and not only for our purposes of development, but we knew from the past year and a half that customers um, have a lot of questions. Yeah, where is it? What is it running? Yeah, so the look and feel, uh, seeing is believing, yeah, was really important. And that's why we went to set up this installation, which is now open. Uh, for uh, for customers and, and to visit. Mm -hmm. What we have done also in the past year is, is contact customers, calculated processes, did uh, case studies. What we do see in, and was confirmed before that although some business cases are really interesting, the fact that it's new, also probably in decision boards, it gives certainly delay on the um, on the progress of the rollout. So we, we believe with our test setup now, uh, things will change. And then my role will be to, uh, once this, this design is finished, to uh, release it for standard production so that basically the performances will stay the same, but the lead times will uh, drastically improve. Okay, I think this. So I think this comes to the end of our uh, presentation, um, maybe short and sweet. But uh, the idea is to basically prove that waste heat from uh, air compressors can be used to uh, support for this uh, decarbonization of the utility rooms. Thank you very much, Konrad and uh, Manuel, <clears throat> for this uh, nice overview of Atlas Copco in Belgium.